Hi, I'm Kieran McQuilkin. I'm the higher ed reporter for the Rockbridge Report. Here with me today is John Rainoni, president of Dabney S. Lancaster Community College. Thanks for joining us, John. It's great to be here. So my first question is, is how long have you been at Dabney? Sure. I started uh, as president at Dabney in July of 2013, so it's been about 20 months or so. And how many students do you have at both locations? Sure. Um, we serve uh, uh, about 1,900 credit students a year, and then we serve about another 1,000 or so uh, workforce students. Um, these are individuals who are um, most likely currently employed, uh, and we go in and, and sort of upgrade their skills. Okay. Do you have a lot of students who are working and taking classes? Yeah, um, we, have, we have a number. That's the typical uh, profile of a community college student where um, you know, many of them will have a family. They will try to be going to school three-quarter time, full-time, and in many cases, they're working at least 20 hours a week. Mm -hmm. So uh, as a percentage, how many of those students have financial aid packages and, and where does that financial aid come from? Sure. Um, well, we, we um, um, the financial aid piece, um, about 80% about of our students are eligible for, for some form of financial aid. Um, we offer federal financial aid, uh, like most two and four year institutions. Um, we also have uh, a private educational foundation which provides about a thousand uh, um, about a thousand students a year about a hundred thousand dollars or so um, of scholarships uh, per year um, and these are all uh, donations over the year so they're all endowed scholarships mm -hmm. are there still a decent amount of students who Dabney might have to turn down because they don't have the money to afford community college for the two years well, we're an open access uh, college, so, so um, if you have met, um, if you have a high school diploma or GED um, and take an assessment entrance, um, you can take courses at the college. Uh, the number one reason why students either drop out or don't come to a community college is because of, of finances. Um, even with all the scholarships that we have, there's still an unmet need of about um, $3,300 per student. So um, what we try to do is we try to help them with other scholarships or um, many times their local communities through uh, service organizations will actually have scholarships. So we might um, suggest that they apply for you know those types of scholarships. Mm -hmm. Now, President Obama recently came out with the American College Promise. Um, he'd like to make two years of community college free for those who earn it through a couple of stipulations. Do you think that would have an effect, and, or what do you think the effect would be sure. uh, on Dabney if that goes through? Well, um, you know, some of the details are still coming out on the plan and everything, um, but my feeling is any opportunity that uh, an individual has for college education um, I'm all for. Um, I do think that it will have an impact. It will have an impact on all community colleges. Uh, I do know that Tennessee as a state uh, just recently approved a similar program. Um, and, and I do know that um, uh, about 90% of the high school students who were eligible, who, who were graduating this May have already applied to enter community college. So, so I can envision the same percentage of students, um, you know, wanting to come into Dabney or one of the other 20, 22 community colleges in the state. Mm -hmm. And do you think Dabney would have the capacity to take on that larger load of students? Sure. We, we, we have a number of, um, you know, we still have uh, space and some access um, that is available for, for you know, for students both on our main campus in Clifton Forge or our Rockbridge Regional Center in Buena Vista. Um, what, we, what colleges will have to anticipate is that if there's a swelling of enrollment, then we will have to uh, hire more faculty members, offer more sections, um, and, and, and there may end up being a phase-in period, you know, for something to address those higher needs. Um, but we, we can definitely handle, you know, a much higher need 
you know, for enrollments. And I mean, we do have a number of programs that are full. So we would have to um, encourage maybe a student to uh, start as a liberal arts major first and then and then in year two be able to get into a specific program. Right. Do you think it would, it would increase kind of the how competitive it is to get into those programs, especially the full ones? Yeah, I think that, um, um, I mean, the research is out there, and I think people are starting to realize and understand that, you know, research of by 2020, uh, 60, uh, 67% of the jobs are going to require at least an associate's degree or some post-secondary education. Um, so people are really understanding that, that um, at least having a year of college or a trade or a credential uh, up to either an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree is going to be vitally important uh, for their success. And, you know, the other numbers that are out there, you know, a student with a, with a, uh, an associate's degree uh, will earn something like three quarters of a million dollars more in their lifetime with an associate's degree. And then if they earn a bachelor's degree, it's maybe one and a half million dollars, you know, over a lifetime. So, you know, education does e equal um, uh, salaries in, you know, in most cases. Uh, do you think there's a chance there could be a, a higher dropout rate if, you know, community college is free? Yeah, you know, that's a really important and I think, in, uh, um, uh, you know, vital question because what we try to do is that although we're open access, we have uh, academic advisors and things that we call success coaches because what's important to us is, is to not only get students but to keep them. And... You know, maybe their goal is to come to come to Dabney for one semester, um, and then they then they transfer or they get the skills they need and go on to something else. Um, but if they're interested in an associate's degree or a, a two-year associate's degree or one-year certificate, we need to have the pieces in place to make them to help them be as successful as possible. Um, you know, from from uh, expanded tutoring services to more success coaches where they're really taking on a caseload to make sure, you know, that students are going to class. And, and, um, and if they're struggling, then these success coaches can actually refer them to either tutoring services or some other types of services. So yeah, along with the additional numbers, we need to, we need to also have the, um, um, the resources to make sure that, the, uh, that, that those students are, are you know, are successful. Yeah. Is Dabney prepared to take on those extra resources? Well, you know, our, our expectation is that, um, and our hope is that if we do have additional students comes additional revenue. And, and you know, my philosophy is that's, 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 that's tuition dollars and state dollars generated by students. So I'm going to put that back into student services. So, uh, you know, today, if we got a thousand new students, so at our doorstep, I mean, we would have to, uh, you know, we would have to scramble to meet those needs. But, you know, longer term or, or even in the short term, you know, we, we would be able to respond. I think we have the pieces in place. We would just need to expand those, you know, those pieces. Right, right. Well, thank you so much for coming to speak with me. Well, it's my pleasure. And thank you for having me. Thanks. I'm Kieran McQuilkin with the Rockford Report. Thanks for joining us.